Hey everybody, what is going on? Hexlex here. Got another Master Duel video for you. So this is going to be yet another tournament report. And I think I'm just going to also go ahead and make this like my deck profile for Snake Eye uh, for Season 28 here. So this will be, uh, again, another tournament report as well as our first deck profile for the new season. Another tournament report because I have topped yet another Challenger Cup. Uh, this past Saturday, there was another Challenger Cup held for the United States. Uh, just like last time, it was 128 players, 5 Swiss rounds, cut to top 8. And just like last time, I went 5-0 undefeated in Swiss with this deck. Which, I think if I recall correctly, does actually make me the first person to have topped multiple US Challenger Cups, which is... Uh, Pretty big if true. Uh, we actually got top four this time, not even uh, not even just top eight. So we did manage to come away with some amount of prizing there. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the list here. Uh, usually I talk about it more conceptually and then break it down card by card, but I'm gonna do this more, I guess, like quote unquote tournament report style. And I'll talk about the cards individually. Uh, we'll start with engine, look at disruption and the extra. And then after that, we're gonna watch every single game from the tournament, every single one of them. We're gonna watch all five Swiss rounds and all of my top cut matches as well. Um, and I gotta tell you, the Swiss rounds this time were definitely, uh, it felt like um, a bit more of a, a struggle getting to the top cut this time through the Swiss rounds. Uh, last time, a, a few of my opponents just did not have that great of hands uh, against me, but this time, no, we, we, we definitely, I feel like, uh, fought our way through it. So, um, starting off with engine pieces, of course, the big new one here is going to be Bonfire. Uh, this is the latest addition to the deck from the latest selection pack and is a pretty huge addition here. So, uh, one of the biggest questions that I'm sure a lot of people are going to be asking about Snake Eye moving forward is, what do you take out for Bonfire? So here's what I took out. Um, I went down from three back to two Poplar. Well, I say back to two. I guess my first build did only have two Poplar, but uh, we're back down to two only um, after Bonfire has come out because when we had uh, the deck without Bonfire, I think you needed to have as many one card starters as possible. And Poplar, although not necessarily ideal compared to Sinkai Ash, is actually a starter by itself. The thing about running three Poplar, though, is that it makes it really common for you to have an opening hand that has both Ash and Poplar in it, and Poplar is not an extender alongside Snake Eye Ash. Like, you'll normal summon Ash and add the other Poplar, but the Poplar that you already opened in your hand isn't going to really be doing anything uh, pretty much at all. So, uh, for that reason, that's why a lot of people liked two, even before Bonfire. Now that we have Bonfire, and not only Poplar, but also Ash is much more searchable, I think we can definitely go down to two Poplar, uh, as Bonfire is the better one card play to open, right? Uh, another card I took out was my second copy of Original Sin. So this is something that I talked about a little bit in other videos, um, is, you know, people would be asking me, uh, or I guess in some cases even trying to poke fun in the comments that like, oh, you're still on three popular to Original Sin. I think those people were following the mindset of TCG builds, uh, which did have Bonfire. I think this is a huge difference when it comes to deck building, right? Like, now we don't need to rely on opening Poplar for lines or opening, like, a Hand Trap plus Original Sin. Yes, those are plays that lead to a board state we like to end on on turn one, but it's not the ideal way to do it. And again, we can just add Bonfire, which is straight-up consistency for our best way to... Bonfire is actually also an extender, which makes it... It's a better extender than opening Poplar or Original Sin, because because even if your Ash gets negated, you can bonfire for Poplar and still keep the plays going. So, like, not only is this a better starter, it's also a better extender, which is why I took out a copy of Original Sinful Spoils. Um, haven't really missed the second copy, even in grind games, right? Uh, usually you'll have access to Wanted, which will help you recycle it if you really need it. So, yeah, no, I definitely think that uh, we can cut a Poplar and an Original Sin. The third cut card I cut, rather, might surprise some people, but it is something I have also talked about on the channel before. Oh, that's right. If you try to search this card by name, you don't get... Uh, whether you get too many results. So, yeah, one for one. Uh, I took out one for one again. I was playing it in the build last week, I believe, but... Uh, yeah, now the bonfire is out. I think this is just straight up better than one for one. Now I'm sure people are going to be asking why not play one for one alongside bonfire. And don't get me wrong, I don't think this card is bad by any means. But 
of the ways that we have to start our plays, this is the most... Not only is it the most risky, but it's the one that comes up the least often because it's limited, right? Uh, it's also, of course, the most risky because you have to send a monster from your hand to the graveyard as part of the cost. You do also, it says send it to the graveyard. It's not a discard. So if your opponent has something like DiFi or a Rice Heart up, you also can't activate this. Um, I don't know. It has its weaknesses. And again, I don't think it's a bad card. It's just kind of one of those cases where I felt like every other card I mained was just better than one for one. Um... I worked on this build alongside a uh, friend and a testing partner, Foxy Laloon, who she actually got second place, I got fourth, and our main decks were exactly the same. She just played one for one instead of the third Imperm, which is what I'm on, uh, which I, again, I don't think is a bad choice if you value having a little more gas uh, more than having a little more disruption. Um, I just like to play it safe, that's always been the kind of duelist I am, so uh, you know, one for one being more risky and having more disruption just makes me feel a bit more safe. So that was the difference between our uh, main decks there. So uh, that's what I took out for Bonfire. Um, I think that the, the the third pop were the second original, yeah, and then the one for one. So it, it was pretty easy. I didn't want to take out any disruption. Like I've been saying about Sekai a lot lately, I really like the ratios we're on as far as like engine versus disruption so i wanted to take out engine cards if at all possible to fit in the engine card of bonfire so really it's not even adding more starters it's just refining our deck and making the plays that we have better because again i was already fine with the ratioing um this is just really just ended up being a power boost for the deck if nothing else Droll and lockbird is going to be the other major addition to the deck here and to include these two cards I took out the third copy of Effect Veiler, as well as Curry Kara Divine Carnet. So, um, it was a little bit of a toss-up between whether I wanted to take out the third Veiler or the third Imperm. Uh, indeed, if I was on the Heat Soul build, it would definitely be three Veiler, two Imperm, uh, because, of course, Veiler is better to draw during your opponent's turn uh, off of Heat Soul or something like Maxi. Um, Veiler does also have the benefit of being both level one and a tuner, but... I don't know, it just never comes up. Like, if you're normal summoning Effect Veiler, you're probably just sending it off of, like, Original Sin, right? Uh, I've never had a situation where this card being level 1 mattered for Lingaribo, or it being a tuner mattered for, like, Synchro stuff, right? So, uh, and then, of course, Effect Veiler has a couple of drawbacks. Um, of course, Imperm has a drawback of not being able to be used while you have cards in the field, but... Veiler can only be used on the opponent's turn, uh, it can get called by it, uh, and again, it has that same weakness as one for one, where if your opponent's got an effect that causes your monsters or cards to get banished, instead of going to the graveyard, you can't actually use this, because this has to go to the graveyard, so, um, that was kind of like, those were the tiebreakers that made me cut a Veiler instead of an Imperm here. Uh, as far as the Curry card Divine Carnage goes, which I think, yeah, I bookmarked here, um, I end up taking her out over the Sinful Spoils of Subversion because not only is this card a lot more searchable because you can grab it off of Poplar or Diabel, uh, as opposed to Curry card can only be grabbed off of Ash, but this also definitely comes up a lot more often. Um, I, again, I don't, much like 1 for 1, I don't think that Curry Kara is bad. I just don't think it was better than anything else we played in the main deck, really. That, that's kind of what it comes down to for me. Um... Yeah, no, again, I, I think this card is, like, totally fine, and there is a part of me that does actually want to find room for it again, because it's, it's actually for a really interesting reason, too. Um, it's not even necessarily about playing the card, but about being able to search it, because uh, there's a lot of, like, a lot of the time I noticed where um, you'll be able to summon Snake Eye Ash on your opponent's turn, and if you already have Original Sin in the graveyard, using this to search another copy of Ash just feels kind of redundant, right? Um, and, like, you're not really doing much. But being able to grab Curry Kara not only is a different search to grab, which is nice because then you can use Original next turn to grab your Snake Eye Ash, but it also does threaten the opponent a bit, right? Um, as far as, you know, inevitability. Like, hey, you can build a board, but if you're not going to kill me, I'm going to break it with this, right? Uh, it can be that kind of, like, intimidation factor, so... Um, so those are the main differences between uh, this week's build and last week's. Uh, again, as far as engine goes, of course, we're on 3 Sekai Ash, only the one Oak, down to two Poplar, as mentioned. Uh, not that big a fan of Birch, but I haven't tried it in a bit, so maybe I'll test that at some point, but I don't really feel the need to be playing it here. Uh, I think it's a very, very situational extender. Uh, we're, of course, on 3 Diabelle as well. Uh, 2 Flamberge, I think 2 Flamberge is ideal for the pure build. 
Um, Jet Synchron, because we are still doing Synchro stuff. Uh, Sprite Elf is out. Uh, basically, the way that we go into Formula and Baron and Boar Load uh, is if you open Sekai Ash plus Diabelle, you can go into all three of the Synchro plays. So, um, that is the line now. We're not doing the Elf line anymore. It's pretty unnecessary, um, and I did not miss Elf at all. Uh, I guess I can talk about the differences in the extra deck. Yeah, so uh, we took out Sekai Elf and Nightmare Unicorn were the two cards we took out. Uh, in their place, we put a Nightmare Phoenix and Selene, Queen of the Master of Magicians, which is kind of funny because... We kind of took out, like, the uh, Rank 2 Extender. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I do have Elf book bookmarked. We took out the Rank 2 Extender for Rank 2 Disruption, and then we took out the Rank 3 Disruption for the Rank 3 Extender, right, in Selene. Um, but I think that's the way to do it. Uh, I really did not like having to go in a Nightmare Unicorn to deal with background because it's a Link 3, and that's such a big commitment. Um, but Nightmare Phoenix is much easier to go into. It's actually really easy to co-link this with Link Karibo, so that way you get a draw and you don't even, like, lose out on total number of cards in hand. Um, I've seen this last effect come up in the tournament, right? Coding to monsters you control cannot be destroyed by battle. Um, and overall, it's also just a fire link to you. Uh, it's better with the Zealantis line. I think it's a really, really good card to have in the extra. Selene also uh, definitely was very happy to be playing Selene. Uh, it just makes the access code line so much cleaner, right? And um, overall, it's not hard for this to be live. Uh, I thought it was a little situational before, but like... I don't know, we have Diabelle, which is so common, and also Valor. Like, you can also definitely get back a Valor as well. Um, but, yeah. Let's see here. Um, for the rest of the engine, like I said, we're on one original sin. Of course, three Bonfire, one Field Spell, three Wanted. That's all pretty standard. Um, for the Hand Trap slash, slash Disruption, slash, I guess, Counterplay, because we have Call Bys and Cross Out. There's the Maxis, the Ash Blossoms, the One Nib. Again, Call By, Cross Out, the Master Dual Tax, uh, Valor. And Imperm, of course, because the Snake Eye meta, these cards are so good in it. And Droll, I want to talk about this a little bit more. So Droll and Lockbird uh, ended up playing this card. I was already on the fence about it because it's a really good max C counter, uh, which is definitely the best hand trap against this deck. Well, aside from Valor and Imperm. Obviously, it's kind of... Or Ash sometimes. You, you know what I mean. But, um... Yeah, no, so this not only gives you some amount of counterplay against max C, but I think Droll is much better against the Mirror now than it was before because of Bonfire, right? Uh, ironically, this card that allowed us to get a power boost for the deck does also make it weaker to Droll. It's kind of like Math Mech, where, like, Droll is situationally good against Math Mech. Uh, now it's the same for Snake Eye. Instead of not being good at all against Snake Eye, now it's situationally good if they lead with, like, Bonfire or something. So, uh, there is that to consider as well uh, when it comes to the Droll and Lockbird. And, of course, also the uh, myriad of other matchups um, such as rogue matchups or even uh, like Monadium or Super Heavy Samurai, where this card is pretty good. The one thing, the one thing I don't like that much about Droll is that it's not that good against Branded or Lab, which are two of your more common matchups. Um, but other than that, I think it's a very, very good card to have in the deck. I was very satisfied. I almost took it out last second, and I'm very glad I didn't. It came up a couple of times in the tournament. Um, Speaking of the tournament, let's go ahead and just start getting into those games already. I think I've blabbed enough about the list here. Uh, let's take a look at those duels. Okay, so we do have 10 games to go through. We have the five Swiss rounds as well as five Top Cut games. So I'm going to try to refrain from my, uh, my habit of pausing during the video to talk about our opponent's stuff. So first opponent looks like it's going to be on Labyrinth. Uh, let's go ahead and hop into the round one here. If I recall correctly, this is another situation in which, uh, another tournament rather, in which we only won one coin flip during Swiss, so it's pretty wild. Uh, yep, as you can see, opponent's gonna get to go first. Their hand's looking pretty solid. They get to start with the Ariana here. We do have the effect failure for that, as well as Maxi, um, and Poplar, as well as Triple Tech. Like, yeah, we have plays and we have multiple counter stuff. Obviously, we prefer not to open Flamberge, but all in all, this is a pretty good opening hand here. Opponent's gonna set two, and then Ku Clock, as well as activating the Lady Lab. Uh, love to throw out the Maxi here, because not only do I get a draw off the Lady Lab, but I'm very likely, like, in the tournament, like, during the live game, I'm thinking one of the back rows is going to be one of the welcome cards to get me another draw. Of course, we can see it now, um, because it's a replay. So, it's not a welcome card, it's Ice Dragon's Prison, which is even better for me, because that's definitely way worse than a welcome trap card, but it will still give me a draw off of the Maxi. 
Um, second talent is not that great. Sticky Ash here is actually, believe it or not, not the best draw because we did already have Poplar in our hand for plays, so it kind of makes the Poplar. Well, the Ash is a good draw, but it makes the Poplar not good. So they're going to big Welcome Lab. I will, of course, be chaining the Maxi here. Now, you probably noticed that the opponent's other back row is the Karma Can. Of course, again, naturally, I didn't know this during the actual tournament, but. Um, I am keeping that other back row in mind because my opponent is getting past priority during my plays here. So uh, I know it's a trap card that's live and I'd rather deal with it sooner than later. So uh, they, get, they get to go Chain League 1 Lovely, Chain League 2 Ariana. Uh, I'll do Chain League 3 Poplar. They also get to summon their Lady back out. Uh, give me a, oh, another draw off the maxi here. Bonfire and Wanted. Interesting draws. Bonfire actually doesn't really do anything here, but Wanted isn't bad. Neither is Original Sin, right? Uh, so I'm going to start with the Wanted going for Diabelle here. Um, Diabelle is going to pitch the Spare Poplar. My Triple Tack is also live. Well, Triple Tacks, but of course I can only use one, so... Okay, Poplar going to put itself in the Spell Trap Zone. Diabelle F going to set the Subversion, because I already have the original Sin in hand. Uh, I'm going to use the Subversion on uh, just one of the Lab Monsters, just going to do the Lady here. Okay, now I can go for Link Karibo. Uh, I'm going to triple tack here to actually rip my opponent's last card, which looks really weird when they only have one card in hand. Um, but again, they kept getting past priority, and I really just wanted to make sure before I committed to plays that I not only address the back row, but also, like, Lab does run Nibiru a decent amount of the time, so I didn't want to, like, play through all my opponent's back row only to get nibbed, right? So that's why I led with the... Uh, the triple tech here, particularly before I use the original Sin. Also before I use the original Sin, we're going to go for the Nightmare Phoenix. Uh, more interested in clearing the back row than co-linking here, so that's why I just linked away the Link Revo. Alright, opponent's going to chain the Karma Cannon, then they also get to set off of the Lady Lab. Of course, they're going to set up a Welcome Lab, that makes sense. And then the Karma Cannon, yeah, that's going to flip everything down and then destroy, well, send my Nightmare Phoenix. So... Very glad to have played through that back row. We did use the Flamberge there, so we get to uh, bring back the Ash and Poplar. Now I can Oak, uh, get that from deck, Oak for Ash. Wanted, I'm going to draw a card here, and I can put back the Subversion, which is really nice. That Ash Blossom, as soon as I drew this Ash Blossom, I'm like, okay, I win this game. Even though I don't win this turn, I know I can win this game, because I can make the Baron de Fleur here, uh, I'm going to use the formula. Another Ash Blossom is like, we'll definitely take it. Bring back the Jet Synchron. Uh, I can't send it as a cost for Oak because it will get banished, but I can tribute the Jet Synchron for Link Krebo and send that for my Flamberge. Uh, I'm going to use Flamberge to put their Ku Clock in the Spell Trap Zone. I thought it would be summoned or added if I destroyed a monster in battle, but... Um, that's actually not how it works, I just misremembered how it works, but I mean, I guess whatever, it still keeps it out of their graveyard. There wasn't anything major to set up in our graveyard, not like an IP or anything. I am going to use the bonfire during main phase 2, because if I top deck another bonfire, I want to be able to activate it on my turn as well. So, we have our Ash Blossom for the welcome, right? Um, I'm going to use Baron on the Ariana, because it will negate and destroy it, so we don't have to worry about it later. Again, I know this is effect failure, because it took it from my graveyard, so... Yeah, even when they go to Welcome Lab, I got a Nash Blossom. Again, as soon as I top decked that one Nash Blossom there, uh, I, I I knew I had this game. I knew it was going to be a, a W. Alright, yep, coming back over to my turn. Yeah, now, now they have literally nothing. The game even gave me my third Ash Blossom here. It's kind of like a, uh, a, a I guess, funny nod. But the, the thing is here, though, I actually can't really make plays. Because I've already gone through both of my Poplars, so Ash can only add another Sega Ash. That's like all I have left in my deck for Engine there. So, I guess maybe I should have recycled some stuff here. Well, you know what? I should have used Original Sin and recycled the Poplar. That would have been smart. Yeah, that's how I should have done it. But it's really not that big of a deal because, again, my opponent's out of stuff. I've got, a, like, a two more Ash Blossoms. It's like, what could they possibly do here? Like, I, I don't think... Well... To be fair, Lab could top deck like a really powerful trap card that might be a bit annoying, but still, that wouldn't really come up until my turn anyway, and I think I could probably figure it out. I don't know. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm going to normal summon St. Ash here. Oh, that's right! Going for Dark the Dark Trevor, because this is actually the only game I've played so far that went to time. 
And this was time in the round, uh, right after I summoned a dark. But I mean, as you can see too, right? Like, um, my opponent had uh, Welcome Lab as their last face down card. I had Ash Blossom in my hand, and I had more than enough damage on board to finish them off. So it's like, yeah, I won because of time here, but I was already going to win this duel anyway. So, um, okay, there is round number one of Swiss. Let's go ahead and take a look at round number two here. Uh, looks like Brandon was our opponent here for round two. Um,. Yeah, no, it's, yeah, last week I, last week I kind of felt like, yeah, I, I, I topped, but I played against a bunch of rogue decks that all kind of bricked, it felt like, so, uh, it was nice to be able to play against, um, you know, other decks you'll, you would t tend to see on ladder. This opponent did also brick, though, this branded player did get a pretty bricky hand here, gonna set cross out and call by, they do have a nib in hand, but yeah, retribution and fusion duplication not doing as much here. Gonna lead with the Wanted for the Diabelle. Um, opening Oak isn't like ideal, but it's also really not that big of a deal if you open with Diabelle as well. Um, I already have original, so I'll just set Subversion, right? Uh, gonna use original for the Snake Eye Ash. Gonna activate my Snake Eye Ash for a Poplar. Um, yep, opponent doesn't really do anything so far because yeah, obviously they can't. Between Call by Cross Out and Nib, they do have responses, but they are relatively situational here. Gonna set up the Field Spell. Uh, put the Flamberge in the back row there. Go summon out the Link Karibo and activate Poplar's effect opponent, I believe. No, they don't use the call by here. Okay. Uh, do use Ash and send with the Pop. Now they use the call by against the Snake Eye Ash. That makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, the reason I did it this way was because I opened Oak. I was about to summon Flamberge here and then normal Oak and then sack off the Link Karibo. Or I guess Link with it because I was going to go for Nightmare Phoenix to get a blow up the other back row. That's right. But here I can just normal summon Oak anyway, grab back the Snake Eye Ash, and then, uh, yep, as I was just saying, going for the Nightmare Phoenix here to take care of the other face down card. Uh, which of course now I know to be cross out, but... Uh, Oak I'll send with the Flamberge in my Spell Trap Zone to summon out my Flamberge from deck. This will proc my Flamberge in the Spell Trap Zone. This did play into Nib, which I did consider, but I was like, my opponent's on 60 cards, and they have 3 cards in hand. It's not that likely for them to have Nib, but it did turn out that they did, so... A little unfortunate for me, um, but I do have the Ash Blossom in hand, so... Yeah, as soon as I saw the Bistio Magnify, I'm like, okay, it's... Well, as soon as I saw 60 cards, I'm like, it's probably branded. But when I saw the Bistio, I'm like, okay, so it's definitely branded. Which really feel better about having Ash Blossom. Also, this feels pretty good that they can't actually out the Nib token here. So, um, yep. Snake Eye is a completely broken deck, even when they look like they're in top deck mode. They aren't. I can just banish Original Sin from the yard. Put back one of my Flamberges and grab Ash. Ash is going to summon Poplar. Uh, I even get to use the Wanted here to get the extra draw, of course, as well. Uh, going to Bonfire for, I guess, another, oh, that's like my last Bonfire target. I guess I Bonfire just to get rid of it. I don't know. Anyway, Flamberge coming out from the deck. This is why I put Flamberge back in the deck with Original Sin, by the way, to be able to grab it later. Uh, I can use Flamberge and the... Um, subversion to push my opponent's stuff back. Now, here's the thing, though, and I knew this going into the battle phase here, is that this wouldn't be lethal because of the, the ball drake here. But what I can do is I can use the field spell, and even though it's not lethal, I'll still put my opponent down to at least 2,000. Um, I also have Maxi and Ash Blossom in hand, so I'm like, I'm not really worried about that. And then, yeah, I can just make IP here, activate Flamberge's effect, bring back Oak. And Ash, and then I can use Oak to bring back Poplar. I still have so many materials here, and yeah, that'll grab back the original Sin I just put back. And I'll even wait on the IP, you know, just to see. Maybe Goddess or Nightmare, uh, not Nightmare Unicorn, I don't play that anymore. Uh, maybe Goddess will be better here. Yeah, that's the, that's the other thing too about Nightmare Unicorn, why I don't really like it uh, as much, is because any, just about any situation in which the uh, Nightmare Goddess would be good, you can use the Underworld Goddess instead. And again, if you need to clear a back row, you just use Nightmare Phoenix. But you can already see how much more I'm using Nightmare Phoenix than I was Sprite Elf. It's 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 very good. So yeah, here, it's so I can just make a format Apo, set all my stuff back up. Yeah, they're just going to crash. I think they, they know they've lost the duel by this point. This is like, yeah. This is the one game where I was like, yeah, they definitely just uh, bricked. I kind of felt like I was bullying a little bit here, but there we go. There is round number two. Uh, we went second again, as you can see. Lost those first two coin flips. Round three, 
uh, is going to be the mirror, I believe. Yes, so it's going to be a mirror match. And this is the only Swiss coin flip I won. Um, I did win some during... Well, I won actually both of the game on coin flips and Top Cup. But when it comes to Swiss rounds, I am... <laughs> I've only won two across all the Challenger Cups I've played. I've only won two. Um, so yeah, like I said, we get to go first here. This hand's looking pretty good. Uh, can't complain about a hand that has both Wanted and Bonfire. Uh, gonna draw phase Wanted. W what else you could do is, if you really wanted to, you could wait until the main. If you if you open Bonfire and Droll, you can wait until the main phase. I mean, you should definitely do that if you, if you have Triple Tack in hand. But you can wait until the main phase, activate Bonfire... And then if they draw, you can just chain the wanted and then get the search anyway, so. Alright, yeah, they did have the imperm for the Snake Eye Ash, but again, we also opened Diabelle, which means we can play through it. Um, as I said before, if you open Snake Eye Ash plus Diabelle, that does let you go into all of your synchros. Uh, not only the Borland, but also sets up Formula into Baron as well. Um, but I don't think I actually did that line cleanly in the tournament because every time I had the ability to do it, my opponent had disruption. But of course, again, it's fine because you can just go for a regular, quote unquote, regular combo line anyway, which will end on something more like uh, Amble Whale, Flamerage IP, you know, that whole thing. Um, yeah, I did also play in the Challenger Cup on Friday. That one was only 64 people, so there were only three rounds. I went 2-1-1 um, and bubbled. Uh, you got to go 3-0 in that kind of a tournament to top. I didn't really bother with those games, though, because, like, I only really played one game. Uh, my round two opponent was a no-show. Well, no, and then I played round, uh, round three, of course, which was my loss. But my loss was a mirror match where I went second. I didn't open any disruption. They did Snake Eye plays. And then when I tried to do stuff on my turn, they just max seed me. So I, I didn't think it was that interesting of a game. Uh, opponent stop decking another Imperm here. So their hand is actually kind of stacked between the Subversion, Imperm, and Talents, but they load with the Diabell here. I, I will make a, a minor nitpick. Um, well, I don't know how minor it is, but like I definitely think my opponent should have led with Imperm like on the IP here. Uh, that would have not only forced me to use it, I probably would have gone for an app. Well, here's the thing, though. like I probably would have gone for an Apo, and then they could have either Subversion or Talents to take it. Like, I think my opponent could have played their hand uh, better here. I don't know. I, I, my, my intent here is definitely not to, like, like shit-talk my opponents. It's not at all what I'm trying to do here. Um, it's just merely constructive criticism with emphasis on constructive. Um, Jaybird is on Anima, which I have definitely considered playing. I think Anima would come up for me even more than, than Sprite Elf does, to be totally honest. Uh, and yeah, I did put my IP in the Anima zone, which was also a misplay on my part, definitely. Um, yeah, no, I'm not going to pretend like I have perfect play, and, and again, my intention is not to, to rag on any opponents here. Um, I think respectful play is, like, the, one of the most important parts of tournament play. Bad. Yeah, no, I can oak for the poplar. Now I'm not worried about the anima zone, because anima's already used its effect. It's also why I waited for anima to use its effect before I activated IP. So here, they do get to use the Subversion on the Apo. Uh, triple Attack to draw two makes sense here, looking for extension. They do find it in the form of Poplar here. Poplar, in this case, is going to grab the Field Spell. Field Spell is going to set up a Flamberge. Now, Anima and Poplar can get leads for Hita, I would assume, if I recall correctly. Yeah. Well, I didn't actually remember. I just kind of assumed based on the way the play was going, right? So, um, I'm definitely going to Flamberge. There's like, no way I don't Flamberge here, because if you don't Flamberge here, uh, they're just going to Hita steal your Flamberge. Or not Flamberge, Promethean Princess. I always call Promethean Princess Flamberge, but... Yeah, the easiest Promethean Princess of my life. Um, I get to go ahead and just pop that. I also get to use Ambler Whale here to pop the Field Spell, which is huge. Because, um, I mentioned this before, but some people might not know. If you destroy a continuous spell or trap card, or a field or equip spell, before it resolves, it doesn't actually resolve its effect. It has to remain on the field, so... By using Ambla Whale mid-chain to pop the opponent's field spell, they don't get to pull out their monsters from the spell trap zone. Which is pretty big because, yeah, now they're out of plays, right? Um, now those monsters, they don't have access to them anymore, uh, and they can't even send the Flamberge off of, like, Ash or Oak without access to that either. Um, so, yep, there we go. There was round number three there against the Mirror. Yeah, Lab, Branded, and then Mirror. This is a pretty stacked... Uh, 
Swiss rounds for sure. So this opponent's on a really, really cool deck. This is Pearly Tier Limit, which sounds like a bit of an odd combination, but it actually makes a lot of sense, right? Pearly and Tier Limit are kind of weak to the same disruption, but don't really interfere with each other in terms of plays, so you can use one engine to help bait out the other. Oh, I did win another coin flip here. Oh shit, I'm sorry. I thought I only won the two. No, I, I won I won three total so far. Well, three total in the tournament because I won one last Saturday. You know what I mean. Anyway, um, gonna start with the Diabelle. Well, I have, okay, let me go back here. Let me go. I know I said I wouldn't pause, but I kind of talked over those initial opening plays here. So uh, we opened the field spell plus wanted. So that's pretty easy. We can lead with the wanted for the Diabelle. Gonna use the field spell. Okay, so this looks really weird using the field spell to play Snake Eye Ash, but because we opened Oak, what I can do, what I'm doing here, is I can then normal, I can send Ash for the Diabelle, normal summon Oak, and bring back the Ash. Uh, now, here our opponent did end up having the Imperm for our Oak, but I still have the uh, original Sin, so I'm really not super duper concerned about it. Uh, I'm gonna flip up the original Sin, but as you can see, uh, our opponent does end up also having Ash Blossom. So Imperm plus Ash will definitely be enough to stop me here. Yeah, I'm going to have to just set the Imperm and pass. So even though my plays got disrupted, I'm actually not that concerned. I have Imperm plus Maxi going into my opponent's four card hand. And during my turn, I have Original Sin and Wanted, so I'm always going to have follow-up plays. So we're going to lead with Pearl Rhino for the... Rhino Heart here. I'm going to use a Maxi in response to the Havnus. Note that I did not use my Imperm here on the Rhino Heart. I'm saving this for Kikolos. Plus, I want draws off the Maxi here, so I'm definitely going to wait until the Havnus gets sent. Uh, I know I said I wouldn't pause during the games. I just wanted to uh, explain that real quick. Anyway, Sleepy Memory is going to bring out the Per Lily here. Uh, and then Rhino Heart's going to fuse. So here I was met with a bit of a decision. Do I want to get Kikolos or Per Lily? But then I topped that to Ash Blossom. So I was like, okay, I definitely just Imperm Kikolos here. Per Lily can grab the my friend, but then I can Ash the my friend. So I definitely like Imperming here um, on the Kikolos because that'll prevent them from being able to... Well, I think they actually can use the mill effect anyway, right? Yeah, because they don't have anything in the yard. But the other, the other thing, too, is, like, I would like to have Imperm Pearly and Ash Kikolos, but they did Chain Link 3 Pearl Rhino, so I wasn't able to use Ash Blossom. So I'll have to settle for this, right, using the um, Ash Blossom against the My Friend. And they did actually end up using the Trivacarma to grab Soliac anyway, so... Gonna have to play through a Soliac, as well as one unknown, which now we know in the replay is Effect Veiler. Um... But Soliac, I can definitely play through. Um, like I said, we're going to use Original Sin, put back the Oak, grab Ash, and then now I can use Wanted to draw an extra card as well. Putting back the, the Original Sin. Ends up being Joel Mockbird. Uh, this is actually going to be a game where it comes up here. Good to roll Summon Snake Eye Ash, and opponent predictably uses Soliac here. But what you can actually do is use Link Rebo to dodge the negate, because Soliac works like Imperm and Veiler. So this works with Imperm and Veiler as well. Uh, also note, if you're playing against Snake Eye, don't Imperm or Veiler their level 1s if they have Link Crebo in the graveyard for this exact reason, right? Um, so yeah, Poplar, because I already used Original Sin, I'm just going to grab the Subversion and push the kick close into the Spell Trap Zone, making it a non-factor. So I'm going to make Hita here, right? Because what I can do is I can Hita, bring back Ash Blossom, is what I was going to do, but I got Veilard. I can Hita, bring back Ash Blossom, go for Promethean Princess. Promethean Princess brings back my other Snake Eye Ash in the yard. I haven't used the second effect, so I can sack it off with the one in the Spell Trap Zone for Flamberge and then have plays, right? Um, but here we have Droll and Imperm going into our opponent's turn, so I'm feeling pretty good about this. Opponent's going to find three happy memories, but I'm going to Droll after that. So now they can't do the happiness OTK anymore, um, but even if they could, I'm just going to use Imperm on the Pearl Lily effect to uh, try to exceed some in here. So now my opponent has nothing. They're out of stuff. They already used the My Friend. Pearl Lily is negated. Um, they don't have tier limit stuff for the Soliac at all. And then now I can just pick up where I left off last turn, Activate Heat to bring back Ash Blossom, go into Promethean Princess, bring back Snake Eye Ash, but my opponent conceded first. 
That was a very, 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 very good duel against an extremely interesting deck. And Uzoria actually ended up winning the whole tournament. Uh, rocking Pearly Tear. And I believe they used Makanko in best of three when they were going second. So two very cool decks uh, piloted by a very skillful player. Uh, Got to give a huge congrats to Uzoria um, for winning the tournament there. Also got to give a huge congrats to my testing partner, Foxy Laloon, who, as I mentioned before, uh, ended up making the finals as well. Um, and as you can see here, we actually ended up playing against Foxy in the Swiss rounds during round five. Uh, like I said, Foxy's build, the main deck, is exactly the same as mine. She just opted for the one for one over the third imperm, which totally makes sense. I definitely get that. So let's take a look here. Spoiler alert, I did win this game, and <laughs> I said this to her uh, last night as well. I was like, you know, I beat both of the finalists during the Swiss rounds of the tournament, so in my heart, I won this Challenger Cup. <laughs> but uh, this is so brutal. She went first, but she opened literally all three Stick Eye Ash, all three of them. That's pretty brutal, as well as the one for one. Um, which is, uh, I mean, it, it does still have uses, actually, in a hand like this, for sure. We're actually going to see her use it, if I recall correctly. So, all right. I want to talk about this. I know I said I was going to pause that much, but I want to talk about this, because uh, this is, a, mis is a, mis a mistake I was making before. Um, I did a lot of playtesting with Foxy, uh, and also just in general with this deck, is I would use Ash Blossom on Sekai Ash's first effect, which is what most people do as well. Uh, I've seen on ladder and in tournaments, but if you have Ash Blossom specifically, you should wait for the second effect. Now, if you open Valor or Imperm, then yeah, just use that when they summon the Ash and try to, to search, right? But if you open Ash Blossom, you can actually wait for the second effect, which sounds kind of weird, because um, it does set them up with the Poplar and the Field Spell, but it'll still put them in a situation where if they don't have extension, they can't do anything else. And not only that, they've run through more of their resources, which will make it harder for them to come back on a follow-up play if you don't kill them on your follow-up turn. So I wanted to very, very much talk about that interaction right here. Um, but Foxy does have follow-up. The one-for-one one is actually going to be very, very good for here. Uh, very, very good for her here, is what I meant to say. Uh, she gets to pull out the Jet Synchron and lick it off with a Poplar going for IP Masquerade. Now, Poplar's effect will put it the Ash in the Spell Trap Zone. Now, Jet Synchron can pitch the last remaining Ash for itself, linking off with the IP Masquerade, which will go for the Promethean Princess. Okay, now Promethean Princess gets to bring back the Oak that was uh, set up earlier. Now, we have Oak, who has its second effect available, to pull out the Flamberge from the deck. All right, Flamberge F is gonna put the IP in the Spell Trap, of course, linking off the Jet Synchron and the Flamberge here in order to summon out the Hita. Um, because I interrupted where I did, Foxy does have to go for a little bit of a weird line here, um, but it's definitely still a very good one here. Hita's gonna pull out the Ash Blossom from my yard, and now she can make a three mat Appalooza. So. Going into my turn, she already has the Appalooza established. The Fire Monster set up for the Promethean Princess. And even though the uh, the Flambridge isn't on the field, excuse me, uh, even though the Flambridge isn't on the field, the Field Spell can still pull up the IP here. Let me take a sip of water for a sec. So my hand is stacked, by the way. Uh, especially for exactly the mirror match. This is like a custom hand against the mirror. Um, especially the cross out. This cross out was massive because it means I can counter the field spell, which means I don't have to deal with IP. I only have to put up with the Appalooza here. So, yeah, like I said, I'm going to cross out the Divine Temple. So now that's negated. No IP this turn. Imperm will still negate my Snake Eye Ash, but I have both Diabelle and Original Sin in the yard. Um, but I don't want to just Diabelle pitch triple attack because that is definitely going to come up for me here. So I'm going to make Link Rebo and pitch that for the Diabelle here. Uh, Foxy is going to use the Promethean Princess here, which is good. This is what I wanted. All right, Promethean Princess coming back. Diabelle Star is going to set Subversion. Now I can use Subversion, push back the Appalooza, not have to deal with that. 
And now I get to triple tack, steal the Promethean Princess, activate Promethean Princess to bring back my Snake Eye Ash, and then yeah, I also just have the original Sin. So, like I said, my hand was like a custom hand for going second in the mirror here. It was uh, kind of wild how stacked it was. And then I ripped the bonfire too. It was just like, I felt, I felt so gross here. I was like, well, the other thing too about Challenger Cups is like, if you go four and one, you're definitely not guaranteed to top because uh, at the end of five Swiss rounds for 128 people, there's typically about four undefeated players. And then that means that four of the remaining 26 players who went four and one are going to be top cut. So uh, if you're going to like top with a record of four and one, you kind of have to lose exactly round five. So it's pretty cutthroat in that regard, honestly, uh, as far as being top cut. So like, I don't know, the whole time I was doing this combo line, I was like, God, please let Foxy top as well. But I knew, I, I had a feeling she was going to, um, because she was again, of, of course, also 4-0 going into uh, this round. And last week, the person I beat in round five made top eight as well. So I, I figured it would probably happen here. But I was like, please, please don't, please don't let me knock out a teammate in the last round. <laughs> but uh, for what it's worth, without spoiling too much, Foxy will definitely be getting her revenge in the top cut. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just going to battle with Access Code and Flambridge here for the OTK. So GG's, Foxy. Um, my hand was just, like, way too stacked. And also, of course, she opened three Snake Eye Ash, so... Um, but played that hand, like, I mean, for opening three Snake Eye Ash and also getting Ash Blossom, uh, I think she played that hand extremely well. Um, and yeah, that's going to do it for the Swiss rounds. Uh, before I talk about Top Cut here, I want to, just like last week, I want to show you my uh, going first and going second list that I crafted for the event as well. Okay, so just like last week, I brought a... Variant of my Snake Eye list for going first and a going second cashier list for, well, going second. Uh, for my going first list, it's very similar to my uh, deck I used in Swiss with a couple of differences. Uh, mainly, I cut down on the Veilers and Imperms um, because, of course, you know, I'm going first and won't need them for a counterplay. Uh, Added the third droll to up against Max C, and added one for one for an additional starter here, as well as the third triple tack for more insurance for a turn one board to potentially get the hand rip as well. It might seem a little weird to be playing Valor in particular in a going first build, but um, I think having one single copy for the cross out is, is very good. A uh, shout out to Foxy for that suggestion as well. Um, during the actual tournament, I actually totally forgot to put in the Veiler and still had Subversion in my going first build, which is obviously not good at all. Um, it was it was pretty sloppy on my part, but this is definitely, I think, the uh, kind of ideal going first build here for side decking, um, or for, you know, the uh, games two and three for best of three. For going second, I have greatly reworked my going second cast Shira deck. Uh, as you can see, I did craft a playset of Ghost Mourner and Moonlit Chill, um, oh, I wish I should have looked up the name of the person. Someone in the YouTube comments actually did suggest this, and I thought it was a very good suggestion. So, yep, I just went ahead and crafted. Plus, I've been meaning to craft Ghost Warners for so long anyway. I was like, this is a good time as any to do it. So, Ghost Warners are in, Veilers are out, Nib is out. That was actually another great YouTube comment suggestion I got. Was like, hey, like, Nib is good in this format, but doesn't it really conflict with your actual strategy? And it's like, yeah, you know, it's just a going second deck, so counterplay is important, but at the same time, we do actually need to be able to play the game as well. So, um, Veilers and Nibs are out, Mourners and Gamma are in. Um, this build is also a little different. During the tournament, I didn't have Pathfinders in. I instead had Kurikara and Feather Duster, but as we'll see in some of the games I play this deck, it's kind of hard for this deck to actually find plays, you know, Brick Tira and all that stuff. So I wanted the, the Pathfinders back in in the long run here. So that's my going second cash list for the time being. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and pop over and watch uh, some of these top cut games. Uh, we're going to start with our top eight match against Case Ojama. Uh, Case Ojama brought Super Heavy Samurai to the tournament here, or at the very least, Top Cut. I assume he was on it for Swiss, too. Um, Keizo Jama is a very, very cool dude. Chatted with him on Twitter a couple of times. 
Uh, and I, as I said before, we did actually manage to win our top cut coin flips, which is pretty good. Um, now it's my turn to open a three of, three of a three of, rather. Uh, opening all three of my wanted here. You gonna just fire that off during the draw phase. But you know, um, even though I opened three wanted, I will say Ash, Diabelle, and Crossout is a very, very good turn one hand. Um, uh, I'm very glad I opened a hand like this turn one. Or I, rather, let me say, I'm very glad I won the coin flip opening a hand like this. I can only imagine going a second with a hand like that. That would be uh, bad, bad, not good. <laughs> um, anyway. So, I'm just doing some pretty typical... Oh yeah, no, again, because I opened Ash plus Diabelle, I can set up the Synchro line here, right? So that's kind of what I'm going for right now. I'm going to use the original Sin to send the um, Link Kribo for the Jet Synchron. Now I can make the Borload Savage Dragon. Borload Savage Dragon will, of course, equip that Link Kribo in the yard, but Kisojama does end up having the DD Crow for the uh, Link Kribo. So no, no Omni Negate for the Borload here. All right, so I'm gonna Ash for the Oak here. That will proc the Flambridge effect. I'm gonna bring back Jet Synchron and Sekai Ash. And Kisojama also has a nib, but thankfully we have that cross out. So no, no having to deal with that. So this is actually, I did, I did actually get to pull off the Synchro line at one point during the tournament. I was wondering about this, but I do. This is how you would want to do it, by the way, if you open Ash plus Diabelle. Um, the only difference here is that I should have Link Kribo, of course, still equipped to the uh, Boar Load. But, well, okay, now we're diverging because the Boar Load doesn't have anything equipped. Uh, I'm just going to use it as a material for the IP here. And also, you would normally have the Link Kribo to send off of stuff because, you know, it wouldn't get DD crowd. But I do still get to set up... Well, that's right. I thought I was going to set up the formula line here, but then I realized I was still... I was one material short of that as well, so I'm gonna end up having to use the formula to just make a uh, make a, a typical Ambla Whale setup. So yeah, because of the disruption. But you know, obviously, I'm still fine ending on a board like this. I'm just glad we managed to play through DD Crow and Nib there. Uh, but again, the Nib really only because we have the cross out. So I'm gonna draw phase uh, Flame Bridge for the IP. Um, yep, okay, so Jamba's gonna lead with the Wakaoshi. Uh, as soon as that hits the board, I'm just gonna link it off with the IP and go for Underworld Goddess. Because now not only do I force them to have another, like, extender in hand, but I can also negate an effect that brings back a card, much like he's doing here with the Ghost Spell against my Flamberge, which is definitely not ideal. But I do still have Original Sin and Wanted in the yard, so again, uh, Snake Eye is not a fair deck, it's really broken, and you're never actually in top deck mode. Uh, so yep, yeah, here is the Scarecrow. Uh, Soul Piercer F is going to add the Motorbike. Uh, motorbike is going to add... Another one, Kaoshi. Yep, that's right. Uh, Soul Piercer trying to bring back the scales here, but like I said, I'm going to use Underworld Goddess's effect. Um, I love her, her last effect here. It comes up a lot in this meta. That's another reason why I really like Underworld Goddess over Nightmare Unicorn. I still see the vast majority of people are on Nightmare Unicorn, and to me, it's the same situation as when I played Sprite, right, back in the day, where for a while I was playing both Nightmare Unicorn and Underworld Goddess, and then I realized, like, I'm just never making Nightmare Unicorn. I think Underworld Goddess is just the better IP target the majority of the time. And again, especially in this deck where even if you need Nightmare Unicorn for a back row, well, we have Nightmare Phoenix for that, so. Um, let's see here. Yep, so ending on Saratobi plus the Wagon here. Saratobi blowing up my field spell. Top deck the Veiler, which again, this looks bad, but again, Senkai's not a fair deck. We can just search up plays as follow-up. It's really easy, and you don't have to work for it at all. Um, I waited on the Wanted here because I didn't want to draw my last Poplar off of the Wanted. Um, that would have been a very feels bad moment, for sure. Oh yeah, just chaining Saratobi to get in 500 points of burn. You never know. I mean, I don't think, to be fair, we would, I don't think we'd go to time on game one of a match in this situation, but it's, it's like, there's literally no reason not to do it, right? So, makes sense for the burn there. Yeah, here I, I can't really actually lethal, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I can really only do 6k. Like, I could link off Flamberge and, and Underworld Goddess, which I'll do in main phase too, um, for just more plays in general, but like, 
Oh, that's right, we're going for a Nightmare Phoenix. I'm actually going to do it on the big Benki here, because I noticed that... Where is it? Here in the graveyard. Yeah, I noticed that Big Benki was discarded last turn. So I'm like, Super Heavy Samurai like, almost always plays two Big Benki. So if I pop the other Big Benki, uh, that prevents them from searching if they top deck a Super Heavy Samurai. It stops them from pen to summoning, and also Wakaoshi will still not be able to use its pen to scale effect. Because there won't be anything else to set from the deck. Unless they play Coral, which could be the case. Alright, yep. Oak effects bring back Jet Synchron. Yeah, I don't know, like, I could have gone for access code, but it's like... I also definitely meant to make a 4, a 4 mad apo here. Wait, unless, do I have Princess in the Yard? I don't think I do. Oh, I do have Princess in the Yard, that's why I kept this out. That's right. But yeah, Keizo Jama just going to smack into the apo for lethal. So that was game 1 of top 8 there. For game two, that's gonna be this one here. Oh, I should have checked Queso's deck to see how they sided. Now nah, maybe we can look at that later. Um, so I'm going second here, which means I switched over to my going second to cast Shira deck for game two. I mean, I mean, as you can see here, we open all the disruption that evenly. But again, I think what this going second cash list is missing is that it needs more. It needs some amount of actual plays, right? So, uh, I'm gonna Ash Blossom the Wagon here. I maybe should just let them combo and max C. Oh, that's right, we're gonna max C here anyway. So, Case of Jama is going to go for the Scarecrow. Um, also, very glad that we waited to negate on. Well, you would want to Ash Blossom the Search on the Wagon and not Imperm on the Summon because the on summon effect for Wagon. Uh, if we read here, is just the one that changes the battle position. And if you Imperm on that, they can do exactly this. They can Scarecrow for Wagon anyway, and then bring it back and get the Search. So, if you have Velar or Imperm, wait until the Search effect on Wagon to use it. Don't use it on the Summon effect. So, uh, here I'm just going to Valor the Baguska, and what I can do is I can Summon out the Scareclaw Cache and then go for Rise Heart. Um, right, sorry, I'll make it to a level 7 with Banishing Theos that will let me wheel back the prep that I had to banish for the Scareclaw Cache. And I'm just gonna make Gaia Charger here. <laughs> I'm just gonna make Gaia Dragon because my only real goal here is to battle over Baguska and then make Zeus. And I'm like, this is like the best case use I'm gonna get out of Gaia Dragon here. Um, getting in a little bit of damage in case, I don't know, it happens to come to time, but we still have like half an hour left on the clock here. I, it was not at all going to come to time. Uh, as you can see, Keizo's hand is all hand traps here. Valor, Crow, Bell, Gamma. Um, I'm going to max C in response to the Swift Scarecrow, or the, not Swift Scarecrow, this uh, Super Heavy Scarecrow here. So, D Shift doesn't really do any good anymore. Uh, wagon coming out here. I could have Zeus here before the Wagon got the search, but of course I didn't know his hand, so I didn't know if there was an extender in the three cards there. So I decided to just uh, kind of play it cool and wait it out here. But after top decking Ash Boss, I'm, I'm like, okay, that can probably deal with any extender that might come up. So I want to uh, Divine Arsenal Zeus here um, in response to the... Um, Sargus coming down, so that way they can't search the Regulus, which would be in a gate for the Zeus. Also going to Ash Blossom the Soul Piercer Surge, and was very relieved to see Kisojama go to end phase. Now, we did get a Unicorn, uh, but we do also have a monster on the field, but I also have Prep in hand, so we can use Prep to summon out the Unicorn. Ah, oh, yeah, that big Benki top deck is not going to be any good here. End phase, I'll flip up Prep and summon out Unicorn, as I said. And then from here, yeah, especially with the Rise Heart top deck, it's just a matter of, like... Well, okay, no, there is the Veiler against the Unicorn here, so I don't just get to go for Theosis straight up. Oh, yeah, just getting that activation out of the way. Yep, now we can make the Rise Heart. Um, and what I can do is I can actually banish the Fenrir, just to make sure I have lethal. Um... Well, I could, because I could have battled the Unicorn over the face down and then Zeus and Rhyzeart for lethal, but this is safer to just uh, activate Rhyzeart, banish Fenrir, use prepping back Fenrir, then overlay Unicorn and Rhyzeart for Big Eye. Big Eye steal the face down, then I can always just swing in for lethal, right? So, 
Uh, GG's, Queso Jama, GG's. Um, my hands are just uh, a little silly. Um, yeah, I think my hands, like, luck was just on my side, I think, when it came to this Top Cut match. So, top four. As you can see, we did play against the one and only Foxy Laloon herself yet again. It's, we actually joked about meeting in the finals, like, before the tournament. Wasn't quite the finals, we did end up meeting in top four. So, uh, I ended up gonna, gonna end up winning the coin flip here, and... Um, looks like Foxy opened Ash Blossom as her only disrupt, and I opened Senkai Ash plus Diabelle, so... Pretty good for me here, it means I'm gonna get to play through the Snake Eye Ash. Um, but once again, I'm going to start by trying to go for the Synchro Combo line here, so... Yeah, that's the thing too, especially when you know they have Snake Eye Ash and Diabelle. Knowing when to use Ash Blossom can get pretty tricky. But I think she did it very well here. If I recall correctly, she uses it against the original Sin, which will keep me off of Jet Synchron and Synchro Monsters completely, which I think was very, very smart on her part. Yep, yep, here it comes out. So that definitely makes a lot of sense. I think that if I were in this situation, I'd probably just use the Ash Blossom here as well. Yeah, because again, if you try to... Well, yeah, no, because if you try to wait, then you can just original Sin for... Like the, the oak or whatever else you need, right? Alright, so Flambridge coming out here, linking it off with the other monster. Yep, it's pretty typical Amble Whale into IP setup. Um, my hand is like stupid good for turn one, because not only do I get to get a, a setup uh, through Disruption, but I also have both Ash Blossom and Imper myself here. Yeah, Flamberge, VIP, take a sip of water here. And there is the Amble Whale. <laughs> uh, just waiting for that Raging Phoenix. Such a better, like, like it's, it's funny because, like, Amble Whale is not, like, a terrible card, but, like, you definitely feel like you could be running a better card whenever you play it, so... Uh, I'm going to let her get the Snake Eye Ash off the Bonfire. I'm not going to use Ash Blossom there. I don't think it's right to use Ash Blossom against Bonfire pretty much ever. Uh, I think you should definitely wait for, like, Ash's second effect or an original Sin or something like that. Which, speaking of which, I'm pretty sure that is where I used my Ash Blossom here is against her original Sin. Because she's already used her normal summon. Yep, so... There it is, boom! Just like she, just like she did to me on turn one. Uh, I'm gonna Ash Blossom her original sin uh, that she attempts to follow up with. Uh, and, and then yeah, she goes to end the main phase here. I'm just gonna use IP and make Underworld Goddess. This will proc the Flamberge and also Underworld Goddess. I was gonna say it can be tricky to remove, but actually with Subversion, it's probably not hard for Snake Eye to to take care of Underworld Goddess, but. More than anything else, it's going to uh, get me Ash and Oak. Whoa, sorry about that alarm there. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I need to stop setting alarms reminding me to record videos, because I am I always just remember to record the video anyway. And it just ends up interrupting the video. But So I did manage to take game one against Foxy there. Uh, that means for game two, I was going to be going second. Uh, Foxy brought a... That's right, so we're, we're gonna see this a little bit here, but this is the main thing that she brought for going first, which was uh, pretty devious there, that, that, that summon limit. All right, yeah, like I said, of course, I am bringing my cash shared deck. I think this is gonna be another game in which, like, this is really the game where I was like, yeah, maybe I need a little bit more plays. But I don't know, of course, I, I do like opening just a ton of disrupts right going second. So I did open Shifter. I'm gonna have to be really careful about when I use it. So the fact that Foxy went normal summon Poplar and used it to grab the field spell definitely tells me she already has Original Sin in her hand. And Original Sin sends the card for a cost, meaning if I shift her on resolution, the card will still go to the graveyard anyway. It also means if I shift her before it has a chance to activate, she can't activate it because you have to send a face of card you control to the graveyard, right? So, because cards can't go to the graveyard, now stuff can't 
uh, you can't activate cards with that cost here. So she's going to triple attack to draw two here, going for the Poplar into the Link Rebo, setting two cards, including that <laughs> very, very nice uh, game, game two tech there. So uh, I'm going to battle phase, go to the... Uh, or I'm going to go into the evenly on the battle phase is my first action here. Foxy, of course, chaining the wanted. Keeping the back row. I didn't know really what she was going to keep here. It kind of seemed like her board was... Like, keeping Link Kribo doesn't do a lot. Keeping Divine Temple by itself doesn't do a lot. Keeping the Oak in the back row doesn't do a lot. So, I wasn't the most surprised when I saw this, right? Uh, the back row being kept. But I will set Imperm across from the back row. Uh, just in case. I am going to Gamma the Snake Eye Ash here. Definitely want to Gamma while I have the ability to do so. Make sure I don't top deck that driver there. Alright, Jet Synchron. She's pitching Original Sin to summon that. And also now gets to use Original Sin's effect to add Poplar for further plays. Which is really good. Okay, we're linking Poplar and Diabelle for Dark. Wanting to take my D shifter, that's totally fine. Because I'm like, if she goes for Selene, but then I chew it for Promethean. I always forget that Promethean Princess doesn't need a fire monster. It's just me trying to balance that card in my brain. So, I don't know, I could have used Ghost Warner, but I decided to use Imperm here um, just because I thought the Mortar was a little bit more flexible. And I'm like, okay, if she goes into, um, well, she's only ever going to go, be able to go into Ambler Whale here, right? So, I don't know, here's the thing, right? Like, obviously, in hindsight, having the Imperm across in the back row was really good. But also, even if I had kept the Imperm down, I wouldn't be able to try to go for Baron here anyway. Um, so, yeah, here I'm going to special the Scareclaw Cash, normal summon the Ghost Warner. I'm like, okay, if I can make a Baron de Fleur here, that's actually really, really good for me, but... Ah, that's summon limit. That's that's also, by the way, a great tech uh, here because what she can do, because you might be thinking, well, okay, now she's under summon limit as well. But what Foxy can do here is she can send the summon limit for Diabelle and then be able to go for plays herself here. Um, and at this point, I don't remember when exactly I concede, but I'll fast forward to the rest of this game because it's pretty obvious by this point that uh, she's just going to be able to come back from here, right? Yeah, Flambridge pushing my Scareclaw Cash. Oh, and that's it. That's Lethal on board right there. Yep, so then I can see it. All right, so going into game three. Going into game three, I brought my going first Snake Eye list. I get to go first. I was feeling pretty optimistic, actually. Uh, this is the position I wanted to be in going into game three. But... Ah, uh, no! I got my... First brick hand of any Challenger Cup game with no turn one plays at all. I have to set Imperm and cross out and then pass. Uh, now, I do actually have the droll against Foxy's Bonfire here. So I'm like, okay, okay, she's got the cross out, sure. But I've got, or the uh, call by rather, but I have the cross out for the call by. So here I had that glimmer of hope come back again. I was like, okay, this is an ideal, but. I might still be able to do something here. Uh, of course, looking at Foxy's hand, holy shit, Valor, Imperm, Maxi. Even if I had ripped Snake Eye Ash here, which I didn't, <laughs> it would have been very difficult for me to play through this anyway. Oh, and then the Nib. Girl, you just had everything. Oh my god. But yeah, I was like, ah, uh, this is not this is not how I wanted uh, the tournament match for game or the, the top cut match in game three to go here there is finally a snake eye ash right on time buddy right on time but no uh, i think even if i had opened or top deck snake eye ash again just looking at foxy's hand here it's so unbelievably stacked um i i don't know what i would really realistically do um she's gonna try to max seed me but i do have these ash blossoms so we get to make use of that but um, you know, I will say this much: if if I was gonna if I was gonna be in this situation where I lost game three of top four to a total brick opening head, which by the way, if you remember, I even add one for one back into this build, so I even have additional starters. But 
I'm glad it was against Foxy. I'm glad it was against a friend and, and testing partner because um, I think more than anything else, like, because there were a lot of people who would be really upset here, and I think this is more of like a mentality kind of a thing, right? I, after this game, more than anything else, I was just really excited that she was going to be in the finals, right? I was like, holy shit, you, you did it, you made it. Um, and again, it goes back to this thing I was talking about uh, a few weeks ago, where, you know, the thing that really makes it, I guess, easy to have that mindset is just remembering that, like, I am not the main character of the universe, right? Um, that means that other people not only are, of course, allowed to, but should have really cool moments as well. And especially people who are, again, good friends of mine, right? So... Yeah, not, not the way I wanted to uh, end the tournament, but again, I'm so unbelievably happy uh, that Foxy made it to the finals. It was so cool to see not only hers, but also my like both of ours uh, testing and, and theory crafting together ultimately end up paying off there. So um, yeah, let's just pop back over to the, uh, the build here. Uh, I guess we'll end on that as I give my closing thoughts. Yeah, so... Um, this deck is definitely tier zero now, by the way. <laughs> this deck is absolutely tier zero, I think, with the release of Bonfire. But again, the release of Bonfire has also brought the weakness of Droll being better against this deck. And I think that's going to make Droll better in this Snake Eye meta in general. So, um, and of course, just because we are in a Snake Eye meta where this deck is probably tier zero, if not, it's extremely, extremely close. That doesn't mean that other decks aren't viable as well. Um, you can definitely still cook and do very well in a format like this. Uh, again, y y Uzoria. Uzoria brought Pearly Tier Lament. Pearly being a deck that's on nobody's radar and certainly not combined with Tier Lament and, and ended up winning the whole tournament. So uh, definitely just goes to show that it's not just about uh, playing the best deck. Um, it's also just about playing what you want to play. But I wanted to play the best deck. <laughs> so, all right, that's going to do it for this video. Um, thanks, everyone, so very much for watching. Uh, let's move now to our outro. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of the video. That means a lot to me. Uh, it's also a great way to support the channel. So thank you very much for in that way as well. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel in other ways, uh, like the very special patrons that I am thanking here, uh, you can do so by checking out some of the links in the description. One of those goes to the Patreon uh, where you can join these fine folk and support the channel that way. I do post daily content over on Patreon. So uh, you do get something for support there and if you're interested i also have a coaching tier option uh, as well details again will be on patreon in the link below uh, also in the description linked below is my twitch page where i stream uh, a few times a week you can go ahead and check that out follow or subscribe over there uh, if you ever want to catch me live uh, you'll also find my second youtube channel if you feel like subscribing over there to watch some of the twitch vods as well as some additional uh, non Yu Gi Oh related content that I make over there. Uh, again, any of those links you want to check out is all a great way uh, of supporting. But again, even if you don't do that, just watching was also a fantastic way to support. And once again, I have to thank you so very much. But uh, in any case, this is Hexlex. I'm going to be signing out and I'm hoping you have a fantastic day.